If you're like me and you've just gotten a new a7 IV, you're probably wondering what are the best settings to change on this camera as soon as you get it and what are the best settings for shooting photography. So in this video, we're going to run through the a7 IV menu. There are definitely some things in the menu that you should consider changing no matter what your style of photography, but I'm mainly going to be setting this camera up for the style of photography that I shoot. I would definitely recommend testing out the camera and figuring out what works for you and your photography style, but I guess this is a good starting point. The first thing that we wanna do is make sure our mode selector switch is set to the photo setting and not the video or the S and Q setting. I've also got my top dial set to manual. So jumping into the menu, the first option that we wanna change is we wanna shoot raw and we're gonna shoot lossless compressed raw. You can choose lossy compression, but obviously as the name states, you're going to be losing some data. In this menu, you can see that you can also choose to record JPEGs. However, I don't bother with that. I'm happy with just shooting raw. If you go down to the record media settings at the bottom, you can choose to shoot photo to one card and then video to the other. I have the auto switch media turned on, which means that if you fill up card one, it's just gonna overflow to card two. And there's also an option for simultaneous recording as well. So if you're shooting anything sensitive and you want an instant backup, you can choose to record your files to both SD cards at the same time. Everything else in this menu I leave at default, except for the lens compensation. So if you go down to the last option, shading compensation, chromatic aberration and distortion, I all have set to auto. Skipping over the media tab, we're gonna to go to the file tab, file folder settings, and this is where we're going to set a custom name for all of our files. So this is really important if you have multiple cameras and you wanna differentiate the file names. If you're on a set and you have multiple photographers and all the photos are being backed up to the same location, you want a unique file name for your camera so you can tell the difference between your camera and somebody else's. So in the set file name menu, you can come in here and you can make whatever you want. I have named my camera A74, just so I know which camera it is. So moving into drive mode, now I have mine set to continuous shooting and mid so that means that when I have my finger held down on the shutter it's going to continue taking photos I don't have it set to low it's a bit too slow and high or high plus is just a little bit too fast for me I don't want to be taking too many photos in this menu as well you also have your bracketing shooting settings I don't really shoot bracketed at all but if you do that's where you'll find it then you've also got your interval shooting which I do use from time to time if I've got the camera on a tripod so I'll run out in front of the camera and it'll just continue continually take photos. I usually set that up when I need it though. In the shutter menu, I've got it set to mechanical shutter and I've got electronic front curtain shutter on. I've also got the release without lens enabled because I do have a fully manual lens that doesn't communicate with the camera. So if you do have fully manual lenses that don't have electronic contacts, make sure you enable that setting. In the image stabilization menu, I do have it steady shot turned on and the steady shot adjust is set to auto. Um, there is a focal length setting. So if you do, as I mentioned just before, have a manual lens, that is where you'll set the focal length for the image stabilizer. So even if the lens isn't communicating with the body, you still have accurate image stabilization. In the shooting display, I have the grid turned off, but if you do like shooting with a grid overlay, that's where you would add it. So you've got a rule of thirds grid, a square grid, and a diagonal and square grid. So moving on to the pink menu now, and these are the exposure settings. I shoot fully manual, so I don't have my ISO set to auto. I just use one of the dials on the camera, which I've set up, which I'll show you later because that's further down in the menu. I have the ISO range set to the standard, so 50 to 204,800. If you wanted to choose a minimum and a maximum ISO, you would do it in this part of the menu. In the exposure comp, metering, and flash sections, I have all of those set to default. But in the white balance menu, I have it set to Kelvin so that I can adjust it as I go and that is also another custom dial which I will show you further down in the menu. Now in the color slash tone menu I have these settings set to default and I have my picture profile turned off. I will actually have a separate picture profile for when I'm shooting video and there is a menu setting that I actually didn't find out until just a couple of days ago. I was a little bit frustrated to be honest because on the Canon cameras, you're able to switch between photo and video and have a different picture profile. That's just how it works. However, on the Sony, when I was switching between photo and video, I actually had to manually change the picture profile, which was very frustrating at first. However, I found this option in the menu. So if you go all the way to the bottom, I know we're skipping ahead a little bit, but in the third option, operation customize, if you go to different setting for still slash movie, and you just tick picture profile, and that will mean as you switch between between photo and video, you'll have a different default picture style. So zebra display, I don't really use this, but this is where you'll have sort of like your overexposure warning. So if you are overexposed, this is how the camera will tell you. And now we'll jump into the focus settings. So in AF slash MF, we have the focus mode set to continuous. So that means that the camera will just continue to focus as long as I have my finger half pressed on the shutter. I have the autofocus tracking sensitivity set to standard. I find that that works fine. 
I have the AF illuminator switched off and the autofocus with shutter switched on. Moving to the focus area setting now, I have it set to tracking. And this is really important because this is basically how the camera is going to autofocus. I have it set to tracking spot S. And the S means small, and that just means that in the center of the frame, when you go back to the shooting window, you're going to have a small box. And this is where you're going to select the point that you're going to track. So when I'm shooting, I'll place that small box over the area that I want to track, half press the shutter, and now I can recompose my shot however I like, take a photo, and it's going to track that area. And for me, that's just a really straightforward, easy way to focus the camera, just focusing and recomposing with the tracking. And this is when there is no person or face detected in the frame. When there is somebody in the frame, it will pick up their face and their eye. So if you go down to the third option in the menu, face eye AF, if you have face eye priority in autofocus switched on and the face eye subject to human, then when there is somebody in the frame, it will priority focus on them. These settings work work really, really well for me. It means that I don't have to change my focusing mode while I'm shooting. If there's a person in the frame, it will focus on the person. If there isn't, choose my autofocus point and start shooting. Everything else in the autofocus menu, I have set to standard, except for when I'm shooting with a manual lens, I'll go into the peaking display and I'll switch that on. And I usually have the medium setting for peaking because the high is just a little bit too strong. In the playback menu, I won't change many of these settings, but if you go into magnification and then go to enlarge initial position, you can choose that when you zoom in on an image to check focus, that it zooms in on the focus point and not just in the center of the frame, which makes it really quick to check if your photos are in focus. Skipping down to the last menu area, the setup menu, this is where the bulk of the customization happens. And you would have already set up your area, date and time that's really important that you have an accurate time on your camera so you know when the photos were taken. Also, if you're using multiple bodies and when you sort all those photos in Lightroom, they're in the proper order that you shot them. So in the third option, Operation Customize, this is where you will set up all of the custom buttons. So we're going to ignore the video setting for now. I might make a full video on my video settings for the a7 IV, so let me know if you wanna see that down in the comment section below. But we'll jump into the custom key dial set and we've got our first set of buttons which are on the back of the camera here and the first one is this AEL button. I have that set to APS-C crop so I'll just press that button and it will give me an APS-C crop which is really cool if I want a little bit more reach out of my lenses I can just press that button and it'll zoom in. Yes I can just crop the photo in post but I like to have an accurate view of what my composition is going to look like and it also saves a little bit of time later in cropping the image. It'll give you a 14 megapixel file rather than a 33 megapixel file so just keep that in mind. This setting's not for everyone, but I really like using it. The AF on button, I actually have set up to switch on and off the face tracking. So if there is a situation where there is a person in the frame and perhaps I don't want the camera to focus on them, I can quickly switch off the face tracking if I don't want the camera to automatically focus on the person. The custom one button up here next to the viewfinder, I have set to interval shooting. So that will open the menu for the interval shooting. I can go in there and set up how long I want it to shoot for and the interval between the shots. The custom three button over here by the menu, I have set to white balance. So if I do wanna change my white balance back to auto, I can do that. And then the custom four button down the bottom corner, the trash can, I have that set to record media settings. So if I do wanna change which card I'm recording to or set up simultaneous recording, I can quickly do that. In the second set of buttons, I have the joystick not set, so that doesn't do anything when you press in the joystick. And then I have the center button set to menu. I like having a, another menu button on the camera on the right hand side of the camera, rather than just using this button up the top here, because you have to use a second hand to press that menu button. Being able to operate the camera with just one hand sometimes is really useful and being able to go into the menu, obviously very useful as well. The left direction on the scroll wheel, I have set to change my drive mode. So if I do want a faster frames per second, or if I just want to shoot single, I have access to that there. Pressing the right side of the wheel will change the ISO. However, I don't really use that. I have a custom dial set for that one. And then the down direction on the wheel is set to peaking display. So I can turn my peaking on and off. Moving to the third section of buttons, which is on top of the camera, we have our record button set to movie shooting, which is standard. And then the C2 button is set to change our picture profile. The custom button on the side of the lens, I have that set to nothing. And finally, we have our dial settings. So that will control this dial at the front of the camera, just below the shutter button, these two dials on top, and also the wheel on the back of the camera. You can have this set up however you like, whatever is most comfortable for you. I have this set up exactly the same as my Canon R6, so that when I'm switching between the cameras, I don't get confused. 
So this front dial is actually set to change the ISO. This top dial, the one that's closest to the mode dial, I have set to change my shutter speed. And then the wheel on the back of the camera, I have set to change my aperture. You can change the aperture on the lens. I just have it set to A, which basically means auto, or if you're in full manual mode on the camera, then you'll set it with the dial. This third lockable dial up here, which used to be the exposure compensation, I didn't originally have an idea of how I was going to set this dial, but I actually experimented with using this to control my white balance when I'm in Kelvin. And I'm actually really enjoying it. So if I want to warm up my shot, I can just move this dial. If I want it to cool down a little bit, I'll move it in the opposite direction. If you go into the playback custom key setting, this is where you'll assign the buttons for when you're in the playback menu. There's only one thing that I'll change in this menu and I'll just make sure one of these buttons is set to rating. So to be able to rate my photos, I really like after a shoot to be able to sort my photos in the camera. So sometimes if I'm shooting with a model, I'll give them the camera and I'll say, hey, Go through the photos. If you see one you like, press the C1 button and that will put a star on it. And that means when I get into my Lightroom catalog, I can see which photos that they chose and which photos that they like, and I can make sure that they get those photos when I deliver them to them. The FN menu settings, I have all those set to default. The different still from movie setting, we've already spoken about that a little bit, but if you do go in here, you can choose a different aperture, shutter speed, ISO, exposure compensation, metering, white balance, obviously picture profiles we talked about, and focus mode when you're switching between the two modes. I do have a different focus mode for video than photo, and also the picture profile, but those are the only two things that I have ticked. The display settings, so this is the menu where you'll choose what information you want displayed. Um, I pretty much kept this at default, however, I got rid of the level, I just didn't really find that useful. Obviously you have two different settings, so what you see in the viewfinder and what you see in the screen, you can set them up differently. And then we have the record with shutter, so when I'm recording video, I like to be able to start the recording with the shutter button, even though the video record button's right there. Um, that just makes sense to me, and it's the way I've had it set up on most of the cameras that I've been using the last couple of years. Number four in the setup menu, we have dial customize. And in here under AV TV rotate, you can change the direction of these dials. So if you scroll one way, it will decrease or increase and you can switch those around. I have mine just set to normal. Skipping down to the finder monitor option, in monitor brightness, I have mine set to manual. I don't like it to do automatic thing. Same thing with the viewfinder and then the finder frame rate I have set to high. If you go into the display option menu, I like to have image review turned on and that is set to two seconds. Basically that means that after you've taken a photo, it will show you the photo on the screen for two seconds. You can always half press the shutter and it will just go back to the normal shooting window. In the power setting option, I have the monitor switch to does not turn off. And then the auto power off temperature is set to high rather than standard because when I was shooting with this camera at first, it did overheat and shut down on me. But since I changed that setting to high, I haven't had that issue. One last thing in the setup option menu, if you go to the anti-dust function, and then enable shutter when power off. This is going to protect the sensor when you turn the camera off and the shutter curtains are gonna come down and prevent dust from getting on the sensor. And the rest of the menu settings in the setup I have set to default or haven't changed. And that pretty much wraps it up. So that's all the settings that I have changed so far on my a7 IV. If you guys have been using this camera and you've found some other game-changing settings, settings that you think are really useful, leave them down in the comments section below for me to see and for everyone else to see. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Make sure you subscribe down below if you wanna see more content like this. Gonna be making heaps of content on the a7 IV. I'm really excited. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.